Hi, I'm Anubha and uh, today we're going to be talking about how this uh, pandemic has affected the way we educate our kids. Uh, it's been almost three months that all of us are homebound uh, because of this pandemic. A lot of businesses and offices have opened up now, but uh, something that we know is not going to open up is schools. Uh, so a lot of schools have started uh, online schooling and uh, for most age, for most kids and uh, in fact for kids even as young as kindergarten. Uh, but as parents, we are really worried if this online form of schooling is helpful or effective for our kids. Uh, so to clear all our doubts, uh, we have Raghav Podar with us. He is one of the foremost educationists in our country. Um, he knows how worried we parents are. So he's here to have a nice interactive chat with us. Uh, I hope this clears your doubt. Raghav is the chairman of Podar Education, an education conglomerate that was built in 1927 and uh, today it has schools all over India. Uh, Raghav himself is super talented and he's been invited as guest speakers in a lot of countries including Spain, Australia, uh, UK. Uh, being said that, he's no stranger to using digital technologies to bring out the best in the children. And for this commendable effort in education, he has been awarded the Bhaskar Pride of India and the Glory of India by the Deputy PM of Thailand. Hi, Raja. Hi, Anu. All good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? How has it been, this whole lockdown for you? It's been like ages we have even met. Absolutely. But it's been a good experience because with every... They say that... You should never waste a good crisis. There's a lot of learning that one can achieve through these kind of experiences. Uh, so, I mean, I'll try to look at it more positively rather than just feel that it's a lockdown and the world is ending. The world is not ending. We are going to overcome this and we'll come out stronger. Yeah, yeah I'm so sure. Like, uh, it's, it's been like amazing to have you. And for all those of you who don't know, it, when I asked Raghav about this live session with the uh, Lil Rats, it uh, literally took, us, took him like two seconds to say yes to it. So he loves education so much. And he totally understands that uh, we as parents are totally worried in this whole uh, pandemic situation. So uh, Raghav, now that a lot of businesses are opening up uh, and the schools are not, right? So how does this affect your school or you personally? Um, first of all, I don't think that uh, schools are not open. I just want to quickly add, Anu, you want to, might, you want to change the angle of your camera because your uh, top half of your face is not uh, visible. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, that's a little better. If you can okay. do that more, it would be great. But anyways, so... Um, yeah. You were saying about uh, things, businesses opening up, but schools are not yet opening up. That's not really true because school buildings have not opened up. That doesn't mean schooling is not happening. In fact, I would say that yeah. we're working a lot harder. Our teachers are really, really working a lot harder than they were in the pre-COVID time. So By it's way, a lot more effort. Hats off to these teachers. Hats off yeah. to these teachers because I am uh, trying to entertain one toddler uh, this time and it was so difficult. I don't know how these teachers do it. Like twenty dollars, I mean, not even dollars, twenty kids daily. It, it, I found a new yeah. respect to them. Absolutely, and I think you know our culture is so rich. We are blessed with a rich culture which says Guru Deva Bhava, which basically yeah. means that God, our, our teachers are next to God, and we need to bring back the respect, reverence for our teachers because they truly are the ones who create the future. They have the future of this country in their hands. They, they, they're the ones who prepare. Every other profession is created by teachers. So we must bring back the respect associated with teachers. And there's a lot of hard work that goes in into their lives. So true. So true. So uh, during the past week, we've had a lot of questions about uh, virtual schooling for you. I'm going to straight shoot them, of you, uh, shoot them at you without wasting much time. Uh, so the first question is, uh, are virtual, is virtual classes a good substitute for classroom training? Now, like this is the new norm, right? Like new norm of 2020. So is it a good substitute? Um, it's a good substitute in the circumstances in the time being. Yes, 100% it is. Um, for the reason that we can achieve so much, which we could not have achieved in traditional brick and mortar classrooms. What are those things that we can achieve? Some of them we found out we have unearthed different facets of pedagogy that we didn't even know existed in our children. 
So for example, you find a shy kid, a reserved kid in a classroom with 20, 30, 40 kids, whatever it is, you might find these children who are too shy to put up their hand or answer a question or question, ask the teacher something. And here through these VLE, through virtual learning environments, you have these children who are blossoming and they ask these questions on the chat box or through the voice. Uh, even kids who had attention spans, uh, uh, who had shorter attention spans, they are much more engaged through these virtual lessons. So there's a lot of benefit also. But that being said, it's not a perfect substitute forever. It's not like as if um, it's going yeah. to replace brick and mortar classroom teaching because at the end of the day, what is, um, what is education? What is the purpose of education? Now, education is not a transactional phenomenon. It's not about transacting curriculum. It isn't just about information delivery. The teacher is not a content delivery boy or a content delivery lady. The teacher is essentially a facilitator, a coach, a mentor. Now, how does education happen? It happens on the basis of human relationships. Those human relationships is what the fundamental crux of the way education is delivered to students in a good way. So the way a relationship, not only of a teacher and a student, student to student, student and a senior student, student and a didi, student and a bhaiya, student and the principal, all these factors which can take place in a brick and mortar school, which can't necessarily be as good on a digital learning space. Yeah. So sure. there is definitely there are a lot of benefits to virtual lessons, but it's not a perfect substitute. It's a great substitute for the time being. And I must add that here, the future of education is 100% going to be blended. It's going to be hybrid. It's going to be digital. Digital means physical and digital. So if the world yeah. is moving towards that, what are we doing sitting and trying to question about, oh, should we have virtual classes or not? Of course we should. In fact, we have been a uh, fast track into that process, which would have anyways happened in time to come. So it's extremely critical that we get the best out of it, get the optimal utilization out of it without losing the value of the social emotional learning and the personality development and those kinds of things that can happen in physical spaces. Yeah. And plus, this is like very temporary, hopefully, because it's only till this whole pandemic phase lasts. And then once it's uh, over, then we we'll we are hoping to everything to get back to the way it was. It's, it's temporary for uh, the sake of having it fully online. I'm saying even when the new normal does emerge, there will be online as well. It won't be fully online, obviously, but it will be digital. So there will be physical classes as well as digital. Both of them are okay. going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, your next, that brings us like to the next one. Does virtual classes uh, produce lethargic kids? Um, one sec. I, is my camera too uh, low? Is my face getting cut no, off? It's, no, 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 it's fine. Okay, okay. I think I thought my face is getting cut off on the bottom. No. Anyway. No, no, no. Um, yeah, sorry. So do virtual classes um, produce lethargic kids? Um, yeah. Maybe. Maybe. They can. If your school is not doing it correctly, virtual classes may not help children for, to move around. But to say that virtual classes is what creates or produces lethargic kids is absolute rubbish. Children learn best on their feet and not on their seats. So the idea of getting children to, okay, what's the last thing you do before sleeping, Anu? Uh, these days, probably just read a book to my daughter. I mean, that's the last thing I do before she sleeps. But She probably uh, puts you to sleep before she sleeps herself. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Most people, no, before, I, I, yeah, I check actually, my phone, I guess. Yeah, check your phone. And last thing is you recharge your phone's batteries. That's the last, Sorry, very last thing yeah. everyone is yeah. doing. Now, we care so much yeah. about recharging our phone's batteries. What about recharging our brain's batteries or children's brain batteries? Now, India, of course, is a very academically rigorous country. Everyone wants to run behind marks and academics and tests and scores. Whatever mm. the child comes and says, mother says, Acha, maths mein kitne number hai? Not for preschoolers, but for the primary and secondary kids. Yeah. So the idea is, if you really care about those marks so much, what do you need to do to recharge recharge those brain batteries of the child? Now, how can you do that? You By getting a dose of happiness. I call it a dose. What is this dose of happiness? It's getting the good chemicals, those good hormones back into the child's system so that they can learn at their best. Dose stands for D for dopamine, O for oxytocin, 
S for serotonin and E for endorphins, a dose of happiness. Now, okay, great. We have we have agreed that now dose of happiness. We need these great chemicals, these happy chemicals. You know, these are the chemicals that you feel really good about yourself, an endorphin rush that you get. But how do we get these chemicals? Like, how do we get them? From where do we get them? The best thing is that you get them in the most natural way. God has blessed us, and especially children. Who are always running around, dancing, jumping, doing aerobics, spinning on their feet, just doing cartwheels, somersaults, and just doing all these crazy things. And we as adults, what do we do? No, 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 child, you sit down, sit down. Don't do all these round and round circles. You'll get a chakkar. You'll fall down. If you and me try, we may get a chakkar and fall down. But this is the way a child learns. That's how the child is developing muscle memory and brain power. It's called the power of play. The power of play is how children learn. I'll tell you what's very funny example. Um, I was giving this one conference at uh, I forgot what city it was, but big conference of quite a lot of few hundred people, um, all in the audience, uh, mostly school leaders and uh, parents. And I asked them, "Okay, how many of your mothers here?" And all the mothers put their hands up, and with that, two guys also put their ha- hands up. And I pulled them up on stage. What happened? Why were you? I mean, why are you putting your hands up? And obviously, they were not listening and not paying attention. They just saw everyone else put their hands up, and um, they also decided to put their hands up. But <laughs> now, why do you think children? Now, how many mothers taught their child how to grasp their finger, or how to crawl? Did you ever teach Arya how to crawl? Okay, now Arya, put your left elbow in front, put your right knee in front, and now move your hip side. You don't teach yeah. your child this. How does the child learn this by themselves? Through self-directed exploration and play. The child's brain is teaching this through themselves. That's how strong our children's brains are. So we need to ensure that we put confidence, faith, belief in our students, and wait and watch what they blossom and become, rather than talk about, oh, how will they do this? And coming back to the question of lethargic, lethargic, lethargic children, they are not. If your school is making them sit on their seat in attention like that, don't get up from your seat. That's the full lesson. Is just about sitting on the seat. Your school is doing it wrong. You have to have energizers. So, for example, at our schools, in every period, we have five or six minutes of an energizer. An energizer could be breathing. It could be yoga. It could be dance. It could be jumping jacks. It could be exercise. It could be a quick sport for five minutes. Whatever it is. So the idea is to get back that good chemicals into the child's brain so that they can perform at their best. the prefrontal cortex the front part of our brain is called the prefrontal po- cortex that is the yeah. ceo of our bodies it controls the executive functioning decision making of our bodies when you stress your child out or you are stressed you're going to infect your child with that stress and what happens is that prefrontal cortex mm-hmm. gets flooded with cortisol and reduces the ability of the child to perform at their best so get those dose chemicals to get rid of that cortisol and the simplest way is let your child be a child let them run around let them do somersaults let, let them do chuck round and round whatever hide and seek whatever games they like let them be themselves and th- you see yeah. how they're going to learn yeah true i i i know i face that with her the more i try to like tell her like okay now you got to do this now you got to do this she just won't so i agree with you let them explore yeah true okay um the next one now you we you know like a few states one state in particular like has banned online schooling till the standard 5 so do you think these online schoolings are really that effective for younger uh, kids also for like uh, kindergarten kids absolutely and i know it's i know it's till standard 5 but a lot of parents think that it's like uh, exposing your kid to screen time or uh, you know we can do better uh, telling them a story or something like that So how true is that? Like so, so I've been reading a lot of reports, and for that one Nimhans report that is re- being referred to, there are about twenty-five yes. more. There are twenty-five more reports, scholarly reports of World Bank, WHO, American Pediatric Association, Australian Pediatric Association, McKinsey, and so many reports around the world that say the exact opposite. Um, so now different countries have different ideas of how to reopen school buildings. um norway denmark scandinavian countries um uh, they use age as a metric of when you should reopen schools and india is a country like that we also believe that age should be the metric of how we are going to decide when school buildings will reopen yeah india feels that the higher grades your 9 10 11 12th 
8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, maybe, should be the ones who will start reopen in school buildings first. Norway and Denmark, they have the exact opposite. They also use age as the metric, but they believe let's put the preschoolers inside classes first because the high schoolers will learn more on VLE through the online classes. So they're different schools of thought. However, if anyone believes that online classes is absolute hogwash, is futile, is useless, it's either that you have no idea of what you're talking about or your school has no idea of how to deliver that virtual class. So it's one of those two. While the world, the entire world is moving ahead with online classes, not moving, galloping ahead with online classes. Here in India, the big debate is why should we have online classes? How will we should not pay fees? Oh my God, screen time. Oh my God, I can't believe the kind of topics that are being discussed here. Exactly, uh, exactly. And quite educated people doing that. I don't, I don't know how we can call them educated because if they're educated, please do yourself a favor and go read some of these reports. Read the McKinsey report. I'll tell you quickly for those who don't want to spend and sit and read a 45-page report. Yes, it is cumbersome to read that. I'll tell you in short what the McKinsey report, for one example, says. Uh, McKinsey in the US has quantified the learning loss of children who don't receive online lessons, who receive low quality online lessons, medium quality online lessons or high quality online lessons versus traditional brick and mortar schools learning. If you have high quality online lessons, your learning loss compared to traditional schooling is zero to one month. So it's about zero to one month of learning loss. Now, the next one is if you have medium quality, average quality, the learning loss is four to six months as compared to your uh, traditional schooling. If it's very poor or poor learning uh, 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 online learning, then it's 10 months up to 10 months of learning loss for a child. If there is no, there is zero online les uh, lessons, it goes up to 14 months of learning loss as compared to regular traditional classrooms. That yeah. is the level of discussion and research and debate exactly. that goes on across the world. And here we are talking about screen time. Itna zada hai. Please understand what the definition, the, the, the debate, for example, American uh, Pediatrics Association, they have defined what screen time is. What is the, the debate is no more about the quantity, but the quality. It's a much more nuanced debate. So the discussions going on in the Western part of the world or the parts more progressive is how do we ensure good quality screen time rather than just how many hours, 40 minutes, 55 minutes, 62 minutes, 75 minutes. Forget all that. Let's focus on the quality. And the idea is if online education is really harmful, the state that banned it has banned online yeah. education up to standard five and they're thinking of even banning it up to standard seven. Um, they yeah. say that one of the things it does this online education is it increases the inequality between those who have devices and those who don't have devices. That is true. Hmm. It does increase the inequality. It definitely does make a difference to those who have the devices. They can obviously progress and those who don't are not able to. So are you hmm. telling me because of those 20% who cannot get those devices, these 80% should also not get it? What sense yeah. does that make? That's crab mentality yeah. that if you can't succeed, I will not leave, let you also succeed. And if you say that these online classes are detrimental or harmful to a child, then why is there a learning? Uh, why is there inequality increasing? If there's if there's some benefit of this online lesson, that is when the inequality will increase. If there's no benefit of the mm -hmm. online lesson, then anyways, there's not going to be any inequality increasing between those who have devices and those who don't have devices. Have devices or not. Yeah, true. So, I mean, how, how absurd is this discussion that is going around? I agree. Around it's absurd. On, I on, mean, on, on yeah, like groups. watching Peppa Pig is not uh, exposing kids to screen time. I know that. And I've, I mean, now that I've replaced Peppa Pig with online schooling, and honestly, Arya really uh, enjoys it. At least, like you said in your first uh, line, you know, it, it a few kids that were shy otherwise have learned to open up. That's classic area. Yeah. And you think about it that if, if really this screen time is such a problem and screen time is harmful, then fine, ban cartoons. Cartoons have been going on. And violence, yeah. the stolen cartoons or the words they use, why are we allowing that? That is what the problem is. That's where the 
content can be harmful it's not the device that is harmful next what will you say or the people who are doing all this that oh you should even ban uh, zoom uh, zoom uh, 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 sessions if the child wants mm-hmm. to speak to the grandparents why screens are harmful mm-hmm. makes no sense you have to understand it's not the screen that is harmful it is the content on that screen mm-hmm. that may or may not be harmful and if there's any parent who believes that my child is not learning anything and all that please don't try to define what your child is learning through an outcome of does he knows abcs does he knows reading writing numeracy all of those that's not how you're going to define it the kind of connections mm. that a toddler's brain makes mm. one million one million connections synaptic connections connections between brain cells per second that is the kind of growth of a child's brain happening till the age of 6 98% of the yeah, child's brain development happens in the first 6 years and then we are saying that no this is the time that they should not have any online education or they should not have if you are an expert at homeschooling fine do it great and then don't have the online classes but if you are not let the experts take care of it don't sure. live it don't put your ostr- head in the ostrich sand and think it's oh, going sure. to work like that in fact if you yeah. think about finland finland is supposed to be one of the top performing education systems of the world they constantly rank number 1 number 2 in all of the pisa rankings tims rankings all of these and you t- i was in finland in a city called juvaskula in central finland and i was in this staff room and talking to the teachers they were preschool teachers and i asked them um so uh, what is your qualification and they said we are phd's i said phd's you mean doctors your doctors in education like what what so like in preschool education i said then why i mean your doctorates your phd's and you're teaching preschool in india if you are a teacher in preschool you're a ecc ed or a b ed but if you're a phd you'll be teaching the 10s and the 12s or the university level so i asked them that how come you're not teaching the university level and they're like why would we do that i mean the most difference that we can make in the child's skills in the child's ability is in the early years is in the age group of 0 to 6 so why would we yeah. not do that i mean let us let us be in that position where we can actually Yeah. benefit the students the most yeah so i think the focus needs to be drastically changed the argument the narrative the debate needs to be far more nuanced of how do we make online classes more contextual more engaging more quality because like you mentioned about peppa pig uh children are watching peppa pig and you think they're not learning you try feeding a child one bite of roti and sabzi while they are watching their favorite cartoon and if you take that cartoon away what happens the child will not even look to your side he will he will stop eating he will throw a tantrum he will throw a fit why because the child is so engaged the child has engagement if you that's rubbish for parents who believe the child is not having any engagement and what are children picking up the words the accents children in india are speaking in british accents because why they watching peppa pig about george and uh, peppa and mama pig or whatever they are called how are these kids learning this who's teaching them this british accent nobody it's the fact that the child's brain is engaged so if your online lesson is engaged if a teacher can hold her lesson in a passionate fun energetic manner that one hour feels like 5 minutes it flows like butter if the teacher is not able to do that yes then your one hour will feel like days days yeah too that's right so i think a lot of this debate also arises because uh, a lot of parents uh, one one this year 2020 group of uh, because of the school because they cannot attend schools or they want the fees to be reduced what what is your take on that like uh, a lot of parents saying that the fees should be reduced because they, the overheads are reduced now okay i must give the school's perspective out here for those parents who think 2020 should be waived off uh, first of all please understand as i said 98% of the child's brain development happens in the first 6 years approximately if you waive one of those 6 years that is 1/6 of 98 which is about 12 12 and a half something like that or maybe more 15 16 so if you think that you want to waive that off it's highly highly silly if you feel that the classes are now reduced and all of that please dear parent who thinks that must understand that the expenses of the school are far more for these softwares for training of these softwares the teachers have been working a lot harder during this time so while may a lot of people were spending holiday teachers were working and working day in day out practicing for these vle classes and they have gone to the next level 
yes initially we had one week before we went online from march 23rd i think we went on lockdown march 30th we were all, already online and then we had a month of school and then a month of holiday the month of holiday was not a holiday we were working day in day out at least 10 to 12 hours a day of practicing on these online lessons so that the students can benefit from it for sure. parents who think that oh but uh, this is reduced uh, the fee should also reduce okay if you were to think of that and even if we say that the online classes cost and all if we just keep that aside for a minute park that thought for a second let us consider when the school reopens the school building reopens the amount of infrastructural changes that the school is going to require the amount of things that you're going to have to add for social distancing for the bubbles all those things that are not only going to be guidelines of the hrd ministry or who but also the school's individual guidelines for each child depending on the school that's going to cost lakhs and lakhs and lakhs of rupees no school is going to then ask the parent no 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 let's impose a covid fees like there are petrol prices diesel prices all the rest of the prices of the country are going up that is okay but education no 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 education should be brought down nobody is discounting the quality of education to your child and if parents genuinely feel they genuinely after reading scholarly reports reading scholarly articles do all that and after that if you still feel that there is no learning happening for your child then your child is not gaining anything then withdraw your child from the school for that much time and then readmit your child after when the school building reopens no problem but mm. don't i mean the problem is the hypocrisy that you'll have a lot of huge group of parents who will want to attend those online classes not want to pay fees and then say no 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 but you can't remove us from the online classes we should definitely and they should be there i agree the child should not be removed from the online class but yeah. my teachers deserve to get paid as well they have families to feed as well they are working harder than ever before and there's no reason why your teachers should not deserve that they are second mothers to the children what are you going to teach your child mm-hmm. if you can't respect your own teacher correct correct so okay so the next one uh, are there any side effects of this digital learning and uh, if there are how do we cope with them uh side effects of course one of i mean negative or positive they both um i'll start some negative side effects ne- negative are obviously you have reduced emotion, uh, social emotional lo- learning sel so what is social emotional learning uh, when children are learning in groups in collaborative spaces or around a round table and they are doing a project or just working around things uh, so those kinds of things are not of the quality or if a child needs to learn resilience those 21st century skills learning how to fall learning how to fail learning how to react to adverse situations um, those things happen much better in face to face scenarios where you supposing a child pulls a crayon from another child and that child mm-hmm. whose crayon got pulled needs to learn how to react how to behave some children will react strongly some will fight there'll be another child in that on that same table who will be watching this does he get involved does he not get involved so these are skills that are developed in face to face that obviously cannot happen in a virtual space but that being said some people talk about screen time and all that as a side effect screen time is not a side effect you're not going to get addicted to screen time because of online classes if a child is addicted yeah. to a screen it's because they are addicted to the cartoon they are addicted to that peppa pig or doremon or pikachu or whatever it is they are not addicted to the screen if the child is addicted for example to discovery channel or history channel or he wants to find out more about this pandemic what's wrong my nephew he's eight, he's about 12 years old and he's going to kill me for not remembering his correct age i think he's 12 or 13 but when he was 9 and a half he wrote a book because he is an avid avid reader at 9 and 1/2 he was an author and if he's reading on a kindle so what how does it matter the point is your addiction is to that content so he was an addicted to reading and he was reading good yeah. stuff good quality stuff so let's let's clearly distinguish those two and understand that what is the difference and what is it the addiction to what is the side effect if the yeah. side effect is that the child is really taking a deep dive into hmm. discovery channel kind of things or into learning about science or learning about math about reading like i spoke about my nephew what's the problem with that let us mm. give the child more encouragement more power to those kind of children yeah true and uh, i mean what about the positive 
so the you positives said, are like i said that uh, the shy children nervous children reserved children who didn't have the ability to maybe speak up in class are now you see the way that they are the ones controlling class we've had classes where those kids who were too shy to even if you call them in a group in front of the class and said okay now you'll perform a play or just talk or, or read out read out from this textbook they would feel too shy and scared to do that these kids online on these virtual classes are taking the class they are getting front and center where the teacher says okay now next 5 minutes you are going to take this class just as a yeah. sample pilot and they are taking it with such beauty you see these kids blossom and that is what education is when you see that yeah. shy kid shy kid who could not put his hand up who could not answer who is yeah. so quiet and today he is the one ruling that class if i may call it that that's the beauty of the i mean there's so many things coming out that we are unearthing of children's these facets of pedagogy that we didn't know existed correct correct okay uh, now a lot of you guys have also started taking online exams i'm sure that's like really new to your uh, teachers as well it's new to the kids and the parents so how do we how do we cope with that like how do you, how do you monitor that is is that really effective also the online examinations absolutely 100% it, uh, the, the quality of online education uh, online exams is dependent on the quality of the paper setter so if oh, person, i just got a question i just got a question asking also how do you monitor cheating during uh, uh, cheating during the online assessments so to stargazing 150 how do you monitor cheating uh, prevention during regular tests yeah which were not online how did you how did you uh, monitor that i mean are you telling me that in india kids did not cheat we've seen that case in bihar where all those kids are climbing up over the tree uh, sorry climbing up over the building and passing chits and all of that and so it's i think we need to understand that the problem is that we are all so ingrained with this thing that we have to chase is marks full year all of us are chasing marks tests scores mm -hmm. what are marks the child's ability to memorize and regurgitate better online education yes mm -hmm. online exams yes you can have a child who sitting with a book next to him so what what's the problem in the mm. 21st century the world economy will not reward you for how much you know but for what you can do with what you know not for the amount of knowledge that you have but for how you apply the knowledge that you have so knowledge. even if yeah. a even if a child is an encyclopedia and memorizes that much ratta mar ke he can remember the whole thing but he doesn't know how to apply that knowledge what good is it even if a child has a book next to him and he's got an open book and he's copying and writing that's what i said the quality of the paper setter if the paper if the exam is set in such a way that if you spend too much time referring to the notes you will not finish your test so it's all about how you set that test and anyways the future of education or the future of these children the 21st century skills aren't about the child's ability to how much he can memorize because they've all got siri in their fingertips they've all got google on their fingertips and they anyways will get that information so why are we still so hung up about bacha if he looks into the book while he's uh, giving the online exam you know, how does it matter but uh, will you uh, uh, will the kids go ahead in the next uh, grade uh, based yeah, on yeah. this yeah oh. yeah yeah of course oh. i mean uh, for the for the last academic year the government has already said that yes you have to go you, i mean you you are going to be promoted you have to promote them you have to promote them uh, there are some kids who are very very deficient in terms of the academics so for them the parents sometimes themselves say that listen that my child spend one more year in this class so those kind of cases we do consider but otherwise for the most part we are uh, allowing children if they've got some baseline level to move to the next class maybe because the government has said that you have to promote them this whole thing comes that why online education because anyways like you know you're being promoted so Uh, it's it, yeah, see the, 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 you know you ask yeah. you ask you ask parents why do you send your child to school and mm -hmm. I mean, why should ch parents send their children to schools so that they can maximize the inherent potential excel at what they are best in why do yeah. parents send their children to schools so that they can get into the best college so if the purpose of your education or schooling is basically to get into the next class or to get promoted to the next class that itself is wrong Yeah. that's not the idea of education that's the, you you are failing that that parent who feels that is failing that child already because you're not preparing him for life you're preparing him for standard 6 then standard 7 then standard 8 that's not the purpose mm -hmm. of why he should be in school okay 
uh lastly okay now when the schools open up the i mean the school buildings open up uh are you guys all prepared? like how are you going to train the teachers the staff the students like uh, i know you get like some guidelines from the uh, government uh, to what to do and what not to do but you think a school is like equipped enough to have the students back already like uh, how does that go not already because obviously it's too early still i mean india where it's at is uh, very high in the uh, increase in of graph and we have caught like 12000 cases today i think in the last 24 hours that have increased so it's not yet ready to open school not buildings yet. absolutely not but uh, whenever school buildings do reopen um, yes there are a lot of guidelines and not only guidelines from who from the mhrd from state governments of course we are going to follow all of those we have our own guidelines because we know what works on the ground we are we have a years to the ground and further i was speaking to a lot of these top educationists global education thought leaders from hong kong from australia from new zealand and they've reopened their schools buildings in the last 3 or 4 weeks so, so they have some, yeah absolutely they have 4 weeks ago so we were having a webinar last week where i was hosting them and um, i was getting their inputs of how have you done it even in finland they've opened uh, so there was a principal from american uh, finland helsinki international school um so a lot of guidance has come from there as to what the on ground situation was after you reopened so there different schools different countries have done different things so for example some countries have put that visor they put a face shield yeah. some have put these shields around the desk uh, some have used hula hoops to determine 6 feet distance so that children can understand what is 6 feet uh, some are using those pool noodles those uh, those foam noodles so a child can understand social distancing um i think we have to understand and be very clear about this children are going to be children at the end of the day i was speaking to this uh, the school leader from auckland new zealand and he said yeah initially we were all very very careful about washing hands and this and that but after one week after two weeks after three weeks children be- children are children you can't stop a child from running you can't stop a child from uh, uh, giving a high five and how long can you stop a teacher from giving an embrace to a child mm-hmm. when the child is crying it's such a hard thing to do because teachers when they see their child crying a nursery child or a first standard child the first thing a teacher wants to do is go and give the child a hug ask the child what happened beta why are you crying don't worry this and all of that and now we are going to be in a position where it may not be as you we, do yeah not in that way yeah yeah so it's going to be very tough for my teachers to stop i mean they have to be less of mothers in that situation because of it's like you know we taught ch- children sharing is caring and now we are teaching children that if you care about the children the other children don't share so it's mixed signals but that's what the nature of the beast is that's what the circumstances are today so we have to ensure that we do uh, keep care of all these factors and yeah there're going to be a lot of changes i mean you have to be uh, they're going to be staggered so the timings are not going to be same for everyone there're going to be only certain standards um but i definitely believe that safety is the number one priority so it's better that we uh don't go into those situations like israel or few other countries that started schools and then had to reshut them because of some cases coming around too many cases coming around but so that better, could be it could be but i'd say let's wait a little longer and be fully prepared and continue yeah. the, the 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 best part of the way we look at it is because we have high quality vle virtual learning environments the loss for a child's learning journey is that much lesser Lesser. so the hurry to open school buildings is that much lesser for us i do understand that a school building allows a parent to be free for those number of hours i do understand that but our for a highest priority is not that a highest priority is one safety and second the child's learning journey the child's skill development the child's ability development so those kinds of things are our priority and i i i, I mean if the parents who have to sit at home because of that well then that's the nature of the beast we can't help it i mean this is a unesco has said the timing of reopening schools is the the most important thing on political agendas across the world if you open too early you risk the public health danger massively and especially of children and if you open too late there's too much of learning loss especially yeah. to those in the vulnerable sections of society who don't have online you devices you don't have online correct correct yeah that's true but you said that i think this is very like this is only till the situation is there and uh, it's the best alternative we have today 
there's no other way i mean it's stupid to like ban online education till class 5th and all i i and what are you going to achieve out of that Th- this is what i think like nothing i rather uh, let the discipline be uh, on i think the online classes also what it's done is like okay this one i have only 40 minutes of online class for my daughter but that 40 minutes is discipline for her like she sits at a place she knows what's happening so today like yesterday was saturday and she's like mama where's the class today it's like okay there's no class today so i, I mean it, it's a nice thing also uh, so especially for but, preschoolers up to 1 hour is absolutely fine even the american pediatric yeah. association australian pediatric association uh, who have all said up to 1 hour of screen time of online learning is not a problem for for preschoolers Yes, three hours, four hours, five hours, and all those schools who are doing that—that that is a little crazy for preschoolers. That's too much. Um, but up to one hour is absolutely fine for preschoolers. Yeah, I think that's perfect because beyond that, I don't need to see them also like sit. It's different when they are at school, but yeah, like for other, I don't see. It depends on the engagement. I mean, if a child, if a teacher is that engaging, she can hold. If you put Peppa Pig and the child is watching yeah. for one and a half hours, she'll still start. zooming to the next yeah. one swiping to the next one so i mean correct 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 yeah yeah but uh, thanks raga for joining us this has been so good so insightful and so helpful i know we are all just waiting for school to reopen and life to go back to normal but uh, i think being said that this has opened a whole new perspective of how we look at um, virtual schooling uh, thank you so much there are a few uh, comments that we've had and i think i like we can answer them in the uh, video later okay sure sure it was my pleasure yeah, thank you for having me some of them are just about the fees like uh, uh, the fees should be reduced and i think we've already answered them so but uh, thank you so much i thank you no it's my pleasure and i'm happy mm-hmm. and i hope your moms who are watching and who will watch this even later after it's live um do actually the most important thing is respect your teacher please do that respect your teachers they are our gurus and it's extremely important that they are given the reverence that they deserve they really work hard they are second mothers to your child and they will continue Absolutely. working hard no matter whether you respect them or not but hats off to all the teachers out there in the education fraternity you are doing a great job keep working hard keep staying motivated and don't let anything bring you down Thank you Raghav thank, thank you for coming thanks thanks bye bye, bye. bye.